Welcome back to my video series where I take you through Betaflight 4.3's configurator and show you every single option and describe what it does and how to set it up so you'll know how to set it up when you run into it yourself. This is video number four in the series and we are gonna be looking at the modes tab talking about setting up aux modes. If that's what you're here for, great. But if you somehow just stumbled across this video, I would suggest you go down to the video description. There is a playlist there and you probably should just start at video number one and work your way through if you're looking for a sort of a more comprehensive experience. But if you're here for the aux modes, let's do it. And you might think we would start this video by going to the modes tab and actually setting up some aux modes. But there's something you gotta do first. So like, what is an aux mode? An aux mode means that we've got our controller and there's a bunch of switches here on the controller and we're going to use those switches to call, to tell the flight controller that we want it to do some thing. For example, the simplest thing we could ask the flight controller to do is flip a switch and arm the quadcopter and go fly. We could use a switch to activate the buzzer. Beep, 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 beep. We could use a switch to switch between angle mode and acro mode and so on and so on and so on. But these radios, most of the radios that we're gonna be working with don't come pre-programmed with any particular function on the switches. There are some exceptions to that. I will mention them a little bit later in the video. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go into our controller and we need to tell the controller which switches we want to do which things. It's not quite that simple though. Here in the controller, I'm gonna go to the mixer screen and you can see on the mixer screen, there are eight channels here. You know, in fact, there are more than eight channels. Most receivers are gonna support at least eight channels and that'll be fine for this example. The first four channels are our main control channels, the aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder. And then we have what are called the aux channels, channels five, six, seven, eight. Basically any channel starting with channel five is considered an aux channel. And then the four main control channels are not auxiliary channels, they're the main control channels. Um, and each of these aux channels is gonna need to be mapped to a particular switch. And the switch moves, the switch moves the aux channel, the flight controller sees the aux channel move and the flight controller associates one of these modes with that aux channel. That is the sort of chain of causality that we need to create. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to set up our controller so that it maps a certain switch to a certain aux channel. Well, it's not, actually that's not the first thing we need to do. First thing we really need to do is look at our controller and think about what do we want the controller to tell the quadcopter to do? And where do we want the switches to be that command those things? We have to map it out mentally. And at this point in the video, you may not know all of the things that you could want the quadcopter to do. I'm gonna tell you at least the important ones before the end of the video. But for example, arming the quad, the beeper, switching between our, uh, angle mode and, and regular acro mode, those are, and activating turtle mode or flip crash mode. These are four basic things that I have on really any quadcopter that I f own. And I set them up with arm on the upper left shoulder switch. It's a two position switch and we arm and disarm. I have the beeper here on a momentary switch here so I can beep, 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 pull the beeper. I have angle mode here on this face switch. And if I have turtle mode, I also have it on this face switch. Like if I have GPS rescue, I might put it on one of these other switches. And there's a lot of switches there that aren't doing anything. And at least on this controller, that's true. There's just a lot of controls that I don't use. I could use them, I don't. You will eventually come up with a set of functions that you want your quadcopter to have and a set of switches that you will set it up. And I recommend that you stick with that for all your quadcopters so that your switch layout is the same for all of your quads so that you get into a muscle memory and you don't have any confusion about which switch does what. So at this point, I know that I'm gonna need to set up one, two, three, switches. That's the number of switches I need for my typical setup. And I'm going to need three aux channels for that. Now, the exact way to set this up is not technically going to be uh, the topic of this video, um, because this is a Betaflight setup video. And how you set up your controller 
is actually going to differ depending on what type of controller you've got. But first of all, the good news is that that's it. Literally just set up three switches, three aux channels, just like that in the time it took me to tell you that stuff. The good news is that most people watching this video are going to have a radio that's running the OpenTX operating system or the Edge TX operating system, and they are almost identical no matter what radio you've got. So I'm going to link to a tutorial about how to set up your aux modes, and it uses this fit radio, the Radio Master TX16S, but no matter what radio you've got, the steps are going to be basically the same for any OpenTX or Edge TX radio. The key thing that we need to know before we proceed is that here in the receiver tab, if we look at aux 1, and I'm going to flip this arm switch here, you can see that aux 1 is moving. And aux 2 is this switch here, and aux 3 is this switch here. Basically, every switch that you have decided or will decide that you want to assign to a particular function needs to cause an aux channel to move up and down. If the switch doesn't move the aux channel, then the flight controller can't know what position the switch is in and your aux modes aren't going to work. Now that our aux channels are being controlled by our switches, we're going to go to the modes tab. And I want to show you how to set up an aux mode in the sort of most basic way possible. And then we'll proceed to some more complicated situ uh, examples. And the most basic thing you'll do is you will pick the mode that you want to set up, like the arm mode that arms the quadcopter and tells it you're ready to fly, starts the motor spinning and so forth. And when, of course, you disarm, then it stops flying and falls out of the air or lands, depending on how close to the ground it was. Um, so we're going to hit add range. And you'll notice when we hit add range here, this pull down is set to auto. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to move this switch and it's going to pick up which aux channel moved when I moved that switch and it's going to fill in aux 1. You can click this pull down and manually select an aux channel if you so desire, but the simplest thing to do is to set that to auto and then move the switch and it'll pick up whichever aux channel you previously assigned it to. Now the next thing I want to call your attention to is this little yellow tick mark. And as I flip the switch, you'll notice that tick mark moves to show the current position of the channel or the current switch position since the aux channel position is linked directly to the switch position. Whenever the channel position is within this bound, this mode will become true. So you can actually see at this exact moment, it is not possible for me to arm my quadcopter because the switch is either, it's a two position switch, it's either low or high, and this is in the middle. So what I'm gonna need to do is I'm gonna pick which position I want the switch to be in when the quadcopter is armed. The way I like to do it is that arm is pushed away from me and disarmed is pulled towards me. Some people do it the, a different way because they just feel it makes sense to their brain or their whatever. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it in the armed position, which for me is pushed away. And then I'm going to drag this over so that it covers up this armed position. Wherever the channel, wherever this little yellow tick mark is, I'm going to drag this over so it's on top of the little yellow tick mark. And I'm going to hit save. And then you'll see that when I flip the switch one way, the arm mode turns gray. The quadcopter is disarmed. When I flip the switch the other way, the arm mode turns, well, it turns red. Uh, and it says arm disabled. So it turns out that, well, you can't actually arm the quad when it's plugged in to USB. And there's other things that can cause the quadcopter to not be able to arm. We talked about that back in video number one when we looked at the setup tab and the arming disable flags. And you can go down and check out the playlist in the video description if you want to see more about that. Now I want to go down and look at these other modes that Betaflight has available to us. And what I want to do is start with the ones that I think are actually like most important for you to know about. And then later in the video, we'll go over some that are much less often used, but I'm still going to cover them because my goal in this video is to take you through every single part of Betaflight. So the next mode that I would normally set up is angle mode. Uh, angle mode means that when you center the stick, the quadcopter will level back out again. So normally in acro mode, when you move the stick, the quadcopter rotates to a new orientation and stays there. And when you center the stick in acro mode, the quadcopter stops rotating. So in acro mode, I could push the roll stick to the right. The quadcopter would roll to the right. If I center the stick and the quadcopter is upside down, the quadcopter will now just stay upside down until it 
crashes. In acro mode, the quadcopter stops rotating when you center the stick, but it doesn't care about its orientation. In angle mode, the quadcopter will tip forward or tip back, tip right or tip left when I move the stick. But when I center the stick, it will level back out again. And so in, ag in angle mode, the deflection of the stick is proportional to the angle of, of tilt. Um, angle mode or auto level mode is easier for a lot of beginners to fly because if you start getting out of control, you just center the stick and the quad basically levels back out again. In acro mode, if the quad gets out of control, you have to reorientate it and re-level it and that can be difficult for some beginners to do. So that's what angle mode is. Angle or auto level mode, same thing. The next one that I would set up in a real quad might be beeper mode. Beeper mode causes the quadcopter to start beeping. This can be useful if you've crashed and you don't know where the quad is, or if you landed somewhere far away from yourself and you're having trouble finding the quad. And if we keep going down, the other one that I said that I would set up is gonna be flip over after crash mode. I'll just hit add range here. Uh, that would be the down position for this face switch here. We'll go over here and we'll go like that. We'll just cover that up and we will hit save. And that actually, we'll talk about flip crash in just a second. That actually is my basic aux mode setup. So what you can do here is you can activate the hide unused modes and like we can just check our configuration. When we do hide unused modes, then any modes that are not currently set up will be hidden. And we can easily just work through our switches arm Yep, disarm, good. Angle mode is gonna be center on this switch, correct. Uh, flip crash is gonna be down on this switch, correct. And beeper is gonna be this switch, correct. At no point did any of the modes activate when they weren't supposed to, and they always activated when they were supposed to. This is a sound setup, and we would be ready to go sort of fly, well, not quite ready to fly, but we would be ready to proceed at this point. So what is flip over after crash mode? There used to be a problem where a quadcopter would crash and it would be upside down and then you'd be screwed because if you arm the quad when it's upside down, it tries to take off and that means it tries to fly straight into the ground. In addition, when a quadcopter is upside down, quite often some of the props will be in the grass and not able to spin. And then trying to spin them could damage them or damage the ESC. When we activate flip over after crash mode, also known as turtle mode, like a turtle on its back trying to flip over. Okay, it's kind of cruel, but usually called turtle mode. Um, when we activate that mode, two things happen. One is that the quadcopter reverses all of its motors. So instead of trying to pull the quad down into the ground when it's upside down. It pushes the quad away from the ground and that can be used to flip the quad over. The other thing that it does is it only spins two of the motors at a time. Uh, so when we first activate flip crash mode and then arm the quad, nothing's gonna happen. The motors will not spin. And we can then use the right stick to push the quad in a certain direction and try and flip it over after crashing. And that's what flip crash or turtle mode is. Now there are a bunch of aux modes we haven't talked about yet because they're a little bit less commonly used. And I am gonna cover them because my goal in this series is to, is to cover every single part of Betaflight's interface. But before we go talk about those aux modes, I wanna show you a couple more things that the modes tag can do. More sophisticated ways of, or complicated ways of setting up the modes. The next thing I wanna show you is that you can actually set up multiple ranges for each of these aux modes. If for some reason you wanted to have different, two different switches trigger the same aux mode, um, why would you wanna do that? I don't know. Uh, can't, I can't think of a good example off the top of my head. But if you do this, you can say that like aux two in the middle position or aux three in the high position will trigger this aux mode. And you can actually set the logic between them. You can have and or or logic. So if you have and, then both of these switches have to be in this position in order for this to happen. If you have or logic, then either of them will trigger it. And you can, you can actually have a surprising number of ranges to build surprisingly complex logic if that's something you wanna do. Although realistically, I can't think of a case where you'd wanna have more than like two. Frankly, most of the time you're gonna have just one, but there you go. There's also the possibility to add a link between an existing aux mode and this aux mode. If you do add a link, then anytime the one aux mode becomes true, 
the other one will also become true. So here we've made a link between angle mode and, here, let's just clear that out of there. We've made a link between angle mode and flip crash mode, saying that whenever angle mode becomes true, then flip crash mode will also become true as well. Again, this is pretty obscure when you might want to do this, but I do want to document that it is possible to do. Now let's go through the rest of the aux modes uh, and we'll just go from the top on down. Horizon mode is a flight mode similar to angle mode. Uh, in angle mode, I said that the quad will auto level itself when you center the stick, it'll level back out again. One of the things people don't like about angle mode is that you can't do flips and rolls. The quadcopter cannot turn upside down. So in angle mode, if I fully deflect the stick, the quad will tilt over to a certain angle and then that's it, it'll just stay there. Well, people want to do flips and rolls, but they still want the sort of safety net of being able to center the stick and have the quad level back out again. That's horizon mode. In horizon mode, the quad acts like it's in angle mode as you're near the center of the stick, but if you fully deflect the stick, it will do flips and rolls. Incidentally, I keep mentioning acro mode. There is no acro mode here. Acro mode just means that the quadcopter is armed and angle mode is not active. So uh, acro mode, there isn't an, a separate acro mode. Acro is just a generic term for what's, what you're, what's there when nothing else is there. It's the mode of no mode. So acro mode is just armed. And then once you activate angle mode, now you're no longer in acro mode anymore. You're in angle mode or horizon mode. Head free mode is used primarily if you are flying line of sight. So FPV pilots, a lot of them don't even know what head free mode is. The purpose of head free mode is that when you push the stick away from yourself, the quad will always fly away from yourself. And when you pull the stick towards yourself, the quad will always fly towards yourself. When you push the stick to the left, the quad will fly to the left and to the right and so on, regardless of which way the quad is facing. Head free mode means that the actual direction that the quad is facing becomes irrelevant and away is always away, towards is always toward. Head adjust mode goes back to head free mode. Head adjust is used to adjust the front to back direction to a new one. So what you would do is you would orient the quad in a certain direction, and then you would activate head adjust mode, and that would be the new front to back axis and left to right axis. And since you're hardly ever gonna use head free mode, you're probably hardly ever gonna use head adjust either, but I said I was gonna show you every option, and by gosh, I'm sticking to it. Fail safe mode. So fail safe happens when you lose your radio link. There are other things that can cause fail safe, but basically when you lose your radio link, then you go into fail safe. And the flight controller has a set of things that it will do when fail safe happens. Most notably, it will disarm and fall out of the sky. But if you have GPS rescue set up, for example, then you could have the quadcopter try to return to home when fail safe happens. If you want to test that, then you can set up fail safe mode. And when you flip a switch, the flight controller will act like it's just gone into fail safe and you can see what would happen if you had a real fail safe. But the advantage is that you could just flip that switch back the way it was and now you're back. So if anything goes wrong, you can just take over. Now, some people will test fail safe by just shutting their radio down. That's fine, but now, oh crap, the quadcopter is doing something I don't want it to do. You got to turn the radio back on again and that takes time. Some people test fail safe by literally, <laughs> sorry about that, by literally yanking the module out of the back of the radio. That's fine, that, that, you know, that's a thing you can do, but the safest way to test fail safe, if you do want to test fail safe, is to just use fail safe mode and then flip the switch to simulate fail safe. For the record, there is no other reason that I, I can think of to use fail safe mode. It's only purposes for testing fail safe. OSD disable. OSD disable is used to disable the on-screen display. So if you find that your on-screen display with your battery voltage and all that stuff that you've got in your goggles, if you find that that is too cluttered and you don't like to see it all the time, you can set a switch that turns off the OSD temporarily. That's it. Telemetry. Uh, when we were back at the ports tab, I showed you how you could set up telemetry and I talked about what telemetry is. It's data that is sent back from the flight controller to the radio, data like battery voltage and so forth. The telemetry aux mode, if it is enabled, 
is used to switch telemetry transmission on and off. And to be honest with you, I can't think of any reason why you would do this with modern receivers. Modern receivers are just made to send telemetry all the time, and there is no downside to having them send telemetry pretty much all the time, none that I can think of. With older receivers, there might have been a conflict where it could either send telemetry or something else. This is vaguely ringing a bell, times when telemetry got in the way, and you would just flip the switch and have the flight controller stop sending telemetry. But today, I can't think of any reason to do this, and I just to pretend it doesn't exist would be my advice. Black box. I mentioned earlier in the series that your flight controller may have a device that lets it store black box data, kind of like an airplane's black box data recorder. And you can use that black box data for tuning or troubleshooting of problems. Now the default behavior for your flight controller is that as soon as you arm the quad, it begins recording black box data. And when you disarm the quad, it stops recording black box data. However, you can also set up a black box mode and if you set up a black box mode, then your flight controller will only record black box data when you activate that mode. And there's two main reasons to do this. Number one, if you have an SD card uh, that stores black box data, SD cards are eight gig or more. They can record essentially an infinite amount of black box data. But if you don't have an SD card reader, you might have a data flash chip, which is a small flash chip that is soldered onto your flight controller. And they're not very big. They may only be like um, 16 meg or something, 128, I don't know how big they are. They're not very big. You can record maybe five or 10 minutes of flying on a data flash chip. So you might decide that you only want to record certain flights and not all your flights, and you would use a black box mode to decide when you did and didn't want to record. The other thing is that sometimes people want to record black box data even when the quad is not armed for some reason. And if you want to do that, you can set up a black box mode and then as soon as you enable it, it'll start recording whether you're armed or not. FPV angle mix ties in to this Betaflight option here in the configuration tab, the FPV camera angle option. And this is a fairly complicated option to explain, and I'm not sure how much time I wanna take in this video about modes to explain this option, but I'll try to keep it short. The camera up tilt compensation combines the roll and the yaw channel to make it seem like you have less up tilt than you really do. I've actually got a video about this whole option and I'll put a link to it in the video description if you wanna learn more about the option and what it does. But if you choose to use this option, the FPV angle mix enables and disables it. So here in the configuration tab, if we have an FPV camera angle degrees of zero, there is no up tilt compensation. If we change this to some number other than zero, now we have camera up tilt compensation active, but if we then go to the modes tab and add the FPV angle mix mode, then the camera up tilt compensation will only be enabled when that option when that aux mode is active. Did I keep it brief enough or did I lose you? Black box erase mode. If you have a data flash chip storing black box data, one of the problems with it is that it, when it fills up, it just stops recording. Can it just like record the last five minutes of flight? No, it can't. It doesn't work that way. It records till it fills up, then it stops recording and you have to erase it. Uh, or download, you have to download the data presumably and then erase it. The black box, now you can do that from the configurator but you can also do that with the black box erase aux mode uh, and you can erase it in the field. The next three options are camera control one, two, and three. And these options don't mean anything unless we go to the ports tab and we choose the run cam protocol for one of our UARTs. So let me just do that real quick. I'm gonna choose run cam protocol for UART four. And then we're gonna go back to the modes tab. Sure enough, look at this. Those three camera options are now labeled camera Wi-Fi camera power and camera change mode. If you have a run cam camera set up like the run cam hybrid, these aux modes will emulate the buttons on that camera. They'll turn the Wi-Fi on and off, they'll turn the power on and off, and they'll change modes. And you would think there's a start stop recording button, wouldn't you? I bet it's the power button and you just short press it to record, I don't know. Surely there, I don't know, but that's what that is. That's what those three options are. Pre-arm. If you have a pre-arm mode, then the quadcopter will not arm 
unless the prearm mode is also active. Let me show you how you would set this up. I'm going to add range. I'm going to pull aux3. And let me just save that. And then we will hide unused mode so we can see what's happening more easily. Um, and let me get rid of the beeper mode because it's also on aux3. Let's just get rid of that so it doesn't conflict. And let's see. Prearm is going to be with this switch pulled here. Got it? Okay. Now, if I try to arm the quadcopter right now, could you see that arming is disabled? It will not arm. And the reason it won't arm, if I go to the setup tab, is it says no prearm. No prearm. Um, however, if I pull that prearm switch, can you see that the no prearm goes away? So what I need to do to arm the quad, if I have a prearm mode, is first pull the prearm switch and then flip the arm switch. And at this point, the quad still won't arm because we're plugged into USB and, right, this isn't a real, we're not really flying the quad. But the point of the prearm mode is to have a little bit of safety where you have to make two switch choices instead of one. So it makes it a little harder for you to accidentally flip your, your arm switch and arm the quad. A, uh, I don't use prearm mode on most of my quads, although uh, it adds safety. And the reason I don't do that is because what I do is I just raise the throttle. When you raise the throttle, the quad will not arm until the throttle is lowered. So raising the throttle is essentially the same as having a prearm mode. You just have to remember to raise the throttle. And then when you're ready to fly, you lower the throttle and you arm the quad. And with a prearm mode, you can see that switch by default just pulls itself to the disarm position or the no prearm position. Uh, and a lot of people think that adds safety. VTX pit mode. Video transmitters have a problem where they interfere with other pilots who are in the air. So if I plug in my quadcopter and you're standing right next to me and you're flying, my quadcopter will blast you and you'll lose video and you'll crash and then you'll be mad at me. Uh, to solve that problem, uh, Team Black Sheep, TBS, invented a thing called pit mode. And pit mode means that the video transmitter goes into an extremely low power mode where it still broadcasts enough video that if you were to like hold it up next to your goggles, you could see the video, but it's in such a weak output power that it's much less likely to interfere with anyone else. That's called pit mode. If you have VTX pit mode set up as an aux mode, then when you flip that switch, the video transmitter will go into pit mode. And when you flip the switch to disable the mode, the video transmitter will come out of pit mode. It's worth pointing out that you must have smart audio set up and you must have your video transmitter tab set up. We haven't gotten to the video transmitter tab yet, but if you don't have your video transmitter set up with smart audio, then you, this VTX pit mode isn't going to do anything. Paralyze mode. The way that paralyze mode works is if you activate paralyze mode, the quadcopter will completely disable itself and not enable itself again and not be able to fly at all until you power cycle it. What's the point of this? There's a form of racing called team racing where pilots will fly more than one quadcopter. And what basically happens is that when one of the pilots crashes out, then they'll paralyze their quad and the next pilot will plug in a new quad for them to fly and that quad will come up and be ready to go. Pretty obscure. You wouldn't do it during normal operation, but that's what it is. Acro trainer. Uh, the idea behind Acro Trainer is that when people are learning to fly quadcopters line of sight, some people want to fly uh, in Acro mode, line of sight, and it's pretty difficult because the quadcopter can easily tilt over so far and get going so fast that it just quickly gets out of control and you, you crash it. The idea of Acro Trainer is that the quadcopter still flies in Acro mode, and that means that it will not auto level. If you center the stick, it'll just tilt over to a certain position and stay there. But in acro trainer mode, it will not tilt past a certain limit. Uh, the default is 20 degrees. So you can still fly the quad in acro mode, but if you just pitch forward all the way, it won't just spin. It will pitch forward to 20 degrees and stay there. And then when you recenter the stick, it will stay at 20 degrees. And you can still fly it in acro mode, but it won't tilt past 20 degrees. The main purpose of Acro Trainer is for learning to fly line of sight, although some people have tried it in FPV to try and sort of maintain control. Um, that's what Acro Trainer mode is. VTX control disable. So we saw in the ports tab that there's a feature called smart audio 
or tramp telemetry that lets the flight controller control the video transmitter. Let's you lets the flight controller change the band and channel and output power of the video transmitter uh, from the on-screen display or from from your from your controller. What if you just temporarily want to be able to use the buttons on your video transmitter? to control those things. It turns out that if smart audio or tramp telemetry is active, then it overrides the buttons on your video transmitter. They just usually don't function at all. So VTX control disable is an aux mode that can temporarily disable smart audio or tramp telemetry. So the flight controller will no longer control the video transmitter and you can temporarily use the buttons on the flight control on the video transmitter to change those settings. I don't know why you would want to do that. If you have smart audio and you can control it using your controller, that's probably going to be easier. But if you regularly needed to use your buttons instead, this would be a way you could easily flip it back and forth. Launch control is used by racers to get a better launch at the start of a race. So the way racers will usually launch is they will pitch forward and they will be their motors will be spinning and they'll kind of hold the quad at a certain angle. And then when the race starts, boom, they're off. Launch control, the quadcopter will hold itself at that angle. So you would activate the launch control aux mode. You would, arm the, you would arm the quad, you would activate launch control aux mode, you would pitch forward to the desired angle, and then you can release the stick and the quad will just hold itself at that angle until you are ready to punch the throttle and take off and start flying. Stick commands disable. Uh, we mentioned previously that Betaflight has certain stick commands, like the stick command to enter the on-screen display menu is center throttle, yaw left, pitch forward. There are actually a ton of other stick commands that almost nobody knows exists because they come from way long ago and we have largely forgotten about them and if you wanted to be sure that you were never going to accidentally put one of these stick commands in then the stick commands disable aux mode would work for you when that when this aux mode is active the stick commands are completely disabled i don't know why you would do this it's extremely difficult to accidentally put a stick command in and they can be super useful if you are trying to use them I would not recommend anybody use this and I can't think of a situation where it would be desirable. And then the last one here is beeper mute. Um, especially when you're working with your quad on the bench, having it be beeping at you all the time can be super annoying. Or maybe you're just in a situation where you need your quadcopter to quiet down, but you don't want to disable the beeper entirely. If you use the beeper mute aux mode, then when you flip a switch and activate that mode, your beeper will temporarily be muted. And then we flip the switch back and disable the mode, the beeper will start working again. Now there's one more aux mode that we didn't see. And I just had to go into the command line and do a couple of settings to make it show up. And that is user one. Uh, there are actually four possible user modes, user one, two, three, and four. And the only time you would ever see them would be if you had manually set them up using a thing called resource remapping. This is a fairly deep topic, and I'm going to put a link to a tutorial I have about setting up user modes, what they do, and when you might want to use them. For the most part, you're not going to run into them, though, until one day you come across something that you need to do that causes you to learn how to set them up. I do want to acknowledge them here, because if you do run into one of them, I don't want you to be like, all right, Bardwell didn't talk about that. And that is everything I could think of to tell you about the modes tab. At this point, if you are following along and setting up your own quadcopter, you have got the receiver working and you've got your aux mode set up. The next place I would go if I was setting a quadcopter up would probably be the motors tab and I would get the motors spinning. So that's where we're going to go in the next video in this series. I'll put a card on screen if you want to go there now, or as I mentioned earlier, there is a link in the video description to the whole playlist if you want to check out other videos in this series. See you there.